In this video, we're going to very briefly look at the idea of error bounds in uh, these different methods of approximating integrals that we've talked about. We're not going to do a whole lot with this in this, this video, but we're going to give you an introduction to the idea. So recall that both left and right Riemann sum estimates of a definite integral are equivalent to approximating the function with a constant function, in other words, a horizontal line segment on each piece that we divide it up into. So if the function were constant, or at least constant on each piece, then the left or right estimates would be perfect, and they would be the same as each other and the same as the actual uh, integral. So the, the amount of deviation from constant is going to be how much they're off, basically. And so one way to measure that is with the derivative, the first derivative. And of course, the more uh, rectangles you use, the small, more intervals, subintervals you use, the um, the better your estimate's going to be, whether it's left or right. Uh, similarly, both the trapezoidal rule and midpoint rule estimates are equivalent to approximating a function with a linear function on each piece. This function is a secant line through the function at both ends of the interval for the trapezoidal rule, and it's the tangent line function uh, at the midpoint of the interval for the midpoint rule. And if the function were linear on each piece, then both of these would be the same, both the trapezoid and midpoint rules would be the same, and they would both be perfectly the same as the actual integral. And so the amount of deviation from the line, which is concavity basically, is going to tell us how far off they are, and so that, they're going to depend on the size of the second derivative, and of course they also get better as the number of rectangles increase. So it turns out that Simpson's rule is equivalent to approximating the function with a quadratic function on each piece where it agrees at both ends in the middle. Again, I'm thinking of that as one interval, whereas some people would think of that as two intervals. And its error actually depends on the size of the, of the fourth derivative. Okay. Uh, and... Need to make an adjustment in one of these formulas real fast. But this is the basic setup here. So we have our different approximation techniques left, right, trapezoid, midpoint, and Simpson's rule. So, what kind of curve are they? approximating. The left Riemann sum is approximating the function with the constant function at the, where the height is at the left end of the function. And the right Riemann sum is the same thing, a constant function, but this time the height's at the right end of the interval. Trapezoid's linear function, which is a secant line between the endpoints um, of the interval where it crosses, crosses the function. And the midpoint is a linear function, which is a tangent line in the middle of the interval. The quadratic function that hits the curve at both ends of the middle would be Simpson's rule. So the left and right are perfect if it's constant. The trapezoid midpoint are perfect if it's linear, and the Simpson's perfect if it's quadratic. So the left is too small when the function's increasing and too large when it's decreasing, and the right is exactly backwards from that. That's why the average of the two is typically uh, a better thing. So, uh, at least if it's all increasing or all decreasing, it's certainly better. Trapezoid rule is concave, uh, is perfect with linear, too small when the function is concave down, too large when it's concave up, and the midpoint rule is exactly backwards for that. Again, averaging those will come up with something better. And just quick look at these, at these uh, error estimates here. Okay. And this turns out to be the error that you can get from the left estimate is the absolute value of that error is less than the maximum size of the derivative where x is any point in that interval. So take all the x's in the interval, wherever the derivative is the largest, take that absolute value times b minus a squared and divide by 2n, and that gives you an a bound for the error for the error. The error can definitely not be more than that. It might be less. Sim it's exactly the same formula for the error on the right estimate. 
The trapezoid estimate depends on the size of the second derivative. So take any x in the interval, take all of those, find the second derivative where that's the biggest. Uh, that's going to be what we put right here. Then you do b minus a cubed and do, uh, it turns out to be 12 over 12 n squared. Notice all of these have an n to some power in the bottom of the fraction and the denominator there. So as n gets larger, that error goes to zero. The b minus a is a, is a fixed amount because we're, we're fixing our interval. And then the size of that uh, second derivative there. The error on the midpoint rule is exactly the same, but notice it's 24 in the bottom instead of 12, so that means the error is typically half as much as the uh, trapezoid, or at least our, our bound of it is. And here's the error formula for Simpson's rule. However, I'm going to need to adjust this one just slightly. This is the error formula that you're going to see in most books, but they're, what they're calling n, I'm, I'm calling uh, that, that n there, is actually uh, twice my n. Okay, so uh, I need to replace whatever they've called whatever they're calling two n. I'm going to replace that by n over two. So this is going to put a two to the fourth power in the numerator. Two to the fourth is is uh, sixteen, and I can do a little canceling here. Okay, and I do uh, do 180 and uh, divide that by 4 and get 45 here. And divide the 16 by 4 and get 4 here. So this is the error estimate with using the n the way I use it in my classes. And of course, if you... Uh, if you use uh, the books, a lot of books will use uh, their n is twice my n. So you take my n and put, put 2 in there and you get the formula I had to begin with. Now I'm not going to go and prove all these formulas. I'm not even going to use them a lot right now. But I just want to give you an idea at this point in the, in the videos, an idea of how good these estimates are. And notice that, that these are basically linear estimates. So their error is going to depend on the size of the, the derivative, first derivative. These are these are constant. One over here. These two are are um, linear estimates, so there's derivative. It's going to depend on the second derivative. This one's quadratic, so you'd think it would depend on the third derivative, but it actually turns out to depend on the fourth derivative. You get a nice little bonus. So actually, this one's uh, is actually not only perfect for quadratics, but also for cubics as well. So that gives you a little bit of an idea about these different error bounds on these estimates.